80% of what's deep inside the world's oceans remains hidden to this day. That's because the ocean covers 70% of the planet's surface, and we only have access to a small portion of that. We can clearly see around 3 miles deep down inside the ocean. So it's no surprise that our most recent discoveries when it comes to wildlife come from the ocean. I mean, there's a lot to explore, like this new shark species called the genie's dogfish, or the longest animal ever found, a 154-foot-long jellyfish, which we just stumbled upon earlier this year in Australia. Somewhere in the Arctic and Antarctic seas, a strange phenomenon appears, confusing people to say the least. It's called frost flowers, but they're not plants at all, merely ice crystals. Frost grows on the long stem plants that manage to break the thin layer on the surface of young sea ice. Frost flowers aren't just made of water, though. They have a variety of microorganisms within, making them a small, temporary ecosystem. Turns out we don't have volcanoes just on the visible surface of the Earth. Submarine volcanoes are just as disruptive to their surrounding wildlife. If the data we have so far is correct, the ocean has the most productive volcanic systems on Earth, most of them being on average 8,500 feet below the surface of the water. A maelstrom, a powerful and at times dangerous whirlpool, is a source of nightmares for seafarers to this day. What sets a maelstrom apart from other whirlpools is that it comes in an extraordinary size and force. It's so powerful, it can even put larger ships in a lot of trouble. One of the most famous of them is called Naruto, and it's located near Awaji Island. Its tides move in and out from 8 to 12 miles per hour twice a day, making it one of the fastest in the world. The sinking of the Titanic is the historical event that made icebergs famous, am I right? Well, sometimes these icebergs even come with colored stripes. They can be brown, black, green, yellow, and blue. Obviously, they're called striped icebergs, and they get their colors from various natural reasons. Like the blue ones, for example, which turn up when the ice melts and freezes back up very quickly. If there are green stripes in the iceberg, it probably means it has some algae stuck somewhere in there. Other more earth-toned colors, like brown, yellow, or black, have other things to blame, like sediments the seawater picks up before freezing. Back in March 2019, scientists stumbled upon one of the most baffling phenomena ever to be found in the sea. During the exploration of one of the underwater volcanoes, they noticed what looked like a small lake, which was upside down. It was at least 6,500 feet below sea level. If you think that doesn't make any sense, well, that's because it's not real. Turns out it was nothing more than an optical illusion generated by the liquid in these upside-down pools. It gets up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit hot, and it's made of some harsh chemicals like sulfur and metals, which makes the illusion possible. The world's largest waterfall is also safely tucked underwater. It's located beneath the Denmark Strait, a portion of water that stands between Iceland and Greenland. If you suddenly grow fish gills, dive in there, and manage to comfortably breathe underwater, you'll be able to see a series of waterfalls that begin at 2,000 feet under the surface, but then drop down to a depth of 10,000 feet. In 2011, Swedish treasure hunters discovered an object on the bottom of the Baltic Sea that they described as strange and mysterious. It's oval shape with unusual stair formations. The head of the team who made the discovery supposed it must have been constructed tens of thousands of years ago, even before the Ice Age, and could have been part of the underwater city of Atlantis. Experts who analyzed the object believe it to be a regular glacial deposit or some other natural formation, but they still don't know for sure. Now, they don't call it the Black Sea for nothing. Located at the southeastern extremity of Europe, it even has sea smoke which is basically steam coming out of the surface of the water. This happens because of the humidity of the oceanic water, which neutralizes the cooler wind blowing on the water surface, creating this vapor-like phenomenon. If you ever check out the ocean surface during sunset and sunrise, you might get lucky enough to see green flashes. 
You'll have to pay attention, though, because it merely lasts for a couple of seconds. They happen because of the natural prismatic effect of the atmosphere of the Earth. During sunsets and sunrises, light emerging from the sun gets diverged into multiple colors, a process that looks like there's a green flash emitted by the water. Red tides do happen a lot of times, and although there's no need to panic when you see one of those, you still must be careful. The technical term for this phenomenon is algal blooming. It happens when there's a rapid growth or blooming of algae in the waters of the ocean. Because of the chemicals these algae contain, they may be trouble for birds, animals, and even humans. So don't be so quick to jump into the waters should you ever experience it. Octopuses and squid have a special trait that sets them apart from other sea creatures. They have three hearts. Wow, Valentine's Day must be very special for them. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make them more romantic, but they do need these three hearts to function properly. They have one major heart that helps with circulation all around their bodies, and two bronchial hearts that are responsible for pumping near their gills. So, with three hearts and eight arms, when the octopus hugs you, you'll know she's very sincere. Based on a study published in 2013, dolphins have names for each other, particularly bottlenose dolphins, which have their own special whistles, just like human names. Not only do they develop this type of whistle to present themselves to other dolphins, but they can also learn other such names so they can better communicate with each other. In the depths of the Pacific Ocean, there's a mysterious singing whale, which scientists have yet to fully understand. They call it the loneliest whale because it emits sounds at a much higher pitch than any other blue whale we've ever encountered. No one has ever seen it, though, so researchers believe its strange tune may be keeping it from actually finding a partner. Oh. Now, standard blue whales have their own particular quirk. Their hearts are more than 5 feet long. They're also about 4 feet wide and can weigh more than 400 pounds. Just to give you a better idea, your heart is roughly the size of your fist, so that would be smaller. Not that we aren't a bit intimidated by sea creatures already, but just so you know, sharks can sometimes grow thousands of teeth. And not just one or two thousand, up to 30,000 teeth over their lifetime to be precise. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see a shark's dentist bill. <laughs> Something to chew on. Scientists have yet to identify a creature on Earth that can actually live forever, but it looks like this is about to change. A tiny jellyfish that's even smaller than the nail on your pinky appears to be the living embodiment of Benjamin Button. That's because it has the ability to go back to a previous developing stage whenever it's in danger or extremely hungry and out of food. It's no surprise they earn themselves the nickname the Immortal Jellyfish. We've known about this species for hundreds of years, but it took us until the 1990s to discover their unique characteristics. We're yet to be sure how it's able to produce cells that regress and regrow, but they could hold a secret that might help advances in medicine for both animals and humans. A strange lake appeared in India 52,000 years ago. It was formed here literally out of nowhere. I recall it was a Wednesday. Anyway, for tens of thousands of years, people came up with various scary stories about the lake. Some locals believe this place was cursed. Others think that the lake's bottom hides the gateway to the underworld. But those are all legends. The real reason for the appearance of this Lonar Lake is even more surprising. At first, scientists were sure that the lake was an ancient crater of a long-extinct volcano. It's in a balsam field made of 65-million-year-old volcanic rock. But then, geologists conducted a detailed analysis of the soil and water, and found that Lonar Lake had a space origin. Geologists found a unique glass inside the lake that forms only with a strong impact and energy release. 52,000 years ago, a huge meteorite weighing 2 million tons fell into this place. It was almost six times heavier than the Empire State Building. The striking power was so high that the volcanic rock melted and turned into glass. Perhaps the bottom of this lake still contains particles of this giant meteorite that flew to us from the distant space depths. Okay, we have a lake created by a space object more than 50,000 years ago. 
But even this is not the strangest thing about it. In 2020, the locals noticed that Lonar Lake had turned pink. In just a few days, the salt water mysteriously changed its color. Biologists and geologists immediately took water samples to the Scientific Research Center. The detailed analysis showed that the water contained an increased level of unique microbes. They accumulate on the surface and emit some pink pigment. Soon, these microbes settled to the bottom, and the lake became transparent again. Also, rains help the water go back to its usual appearance. These microbes color the lake and make the pink plumage of flamingos even brighter. The birds get food from the Lonar Lake and absorb these pink bacteria. Now, Lonar Lake is a popular place among tourists. But this is not the only thing that may surprise you in India. Our next stop is a small village with about 2,600 people located in a hot rainforest. The locals are very hospitable. They welcome not only tourists, but also one of the most venomous reptiles on the planet. King cobras are crawling in almost every house in this village. Locals are happy to see them as if they were their pets. People share water and food with these animals. They even give the reptiles a special corner where they can relax from the scorching sun. Ah, Cobras crawl in houses, schools, and even on the streets. Humans and reptiles are used to each other and feel safe. There has never been a case of a cobra attack in the village. It's the only place in the world where these venomous reptiles live in such harmony with people. Now, imagine a town that consists of many little united villages. The residents are all engaged in agriculture. They know how to extract water from ground rocks, and they bargain well. The town has been thriving for several centuries, and people live happily in it. Then, one day, everything changes. All the residents quickly pack up their stuff and run away from their homes. Overnight, the town becomes abandoned. It is a real story that happened in the state of Rajasthan in 1825. And still, no one knows why the people disappeared from there. The most popular version says that the cruel local ruler collected large taxes from the locals. Then he fell in love with the daughter of the chief of this town and threatened that he would collect extra taxes if the girl refused to be his wife. Citizens decided to support the woman and her father and left their homes in one day. This town is still empty, but the locals from the nearest cities are afraid to approach. Our next stop is the state of Maharashtra. There's a small village there with very positive people. They go to stores, cafes, schools, and banks. Everything here seems quite ordinary, and you wouldn't notice what's so special about this place. But just wait for the night to come. People go to sleep and no one locks their houses. There are no locks at all in this village. The door of any building is always open here. The owners leave the shops, cafes, and libraries open. When locals go to work, they don't lock up their homes either. They don't hide money and jewelry. The reason for this is the complete absence of thefts. The villagers are sure that anyone can get into serious trouble for stealing. According to a legend, about 300 years ago, after prolonged rains and floods, a large black stone slab appeared in the center of the village. This slab symbolized an Indian mythical creature that watched over the locals. At some point, people stopped locking their houses because they knew that no one would dare to commit theft in that creature's face. In 2015, a police station was opened here, but almost no one has reported an incident since then. The building doesn't even have doors because the police don't keep anyone there. Another fantastic place in India is a village in the state of Assam. Hundreds of locals prepare here for an unusual celebration every now and then. They arrange a magnificent wedding ceremony. They set the table, dress up in beautiful costumes, and bring gifts. And all this for the newlyweds. But instead of people, frogs get married here. Locals hold weddings for wild frogs to summon rain. The incredible thing is that the ceremony looks just like a real wedding. The fun can last all day until late at night. Now, there's one dangerous and inaccessible island in India. You can find it in the Bay of Bengal. It's called the North Sentinel. It's a small piece of land that looks like a tropical paradise. But you won't be able to get there. Since 1956, nobody can travel to this place. 
the Coast Guard is always sailing around and patrolling the area. The reason for this is the local Sentinelese tribe. This tribe lives isolated from the whole world. They don't know about modern technologies, the internet, or television. For centuries, the Sentinelese have lived on their own, away from civilization. And the people from India want to keep it that way. Anyone who approaches their island is welcomed by the tribe with a flurry of spears and arrows. And it doesn't matter if you're coming by boat or helicopter. Another reason why you can't get on the island is the Sentinelese immune system. The Coast Guard is trying to protect the local tribe from possible diseases and infections that outsiders can bring with them. The locals have no immunity from the flu or even a simple cold. They don't know what that is. Also, there are coral reefs and limestone around the island which significantly complicates the passage of large ships. Despite all the prohibitions, many people tried to get to the island. In 1880, one officer accidentally discovered this island. He went ashore and found a noble soil ideal for growing coconut palms. The officer also noticed several huts on the island, but didn't dare meet the locals. Explorers and travelers presented the islanders with fish as a gift many times. The locals accepted it, asked for more, but still didn't let them approach their houses. It was also challenging to make friends with the tribe because they communicate in one of the most difficult languages to learn in the world. Scientists and linguists have been studying this language for decades. At the end of the 20th century, outsiders made some progress in building a connection with the tribe. In 1991, a team of anthropologists invited the islanders aboard a large ship. They gave bags of coconuts to tribe members. This may be where the phrase, left holding the bag, came from. Or not. Otherwise, let's just leave these folks alone, shall we? In 1945, five TBF Avenger aircraft took flight for a routine training exercise around the Bermuda Triangle. In the middle of the exercise, the planes were struck by intense rain and heavy winds despite the clear weather forecast. The pilots became extremely disoriented and radioed the base to report that their navigational equipment had stopped working. The last thing the base heard was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we'll all go down together, and then static. The five planes and their 14 crew members were never seen or heard from again. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. No one knows exactly how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. Another bizarre theory trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charlie Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the US on its way to the West Indies. 
the ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. An enormous investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. This particular area of the ocean is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On the ocean floor, decomposing organisms let off large concentrations of methane gas that gets trapped under the water. This gas can build up until, boom, it ruptures. The gas surges up to the surface and erupts. If a ship was in the area of one of these ruptures, the water would become much less dense and cause the ship to sink rapidly and without warning. Scientists believe this could be the cause of the many disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. While this theory makes a lot of sense, it doesn't seem too likely. The U.S. Geological Survey has stated that no large releases of gas are believed to have occurred in this area for the past 15,000 years. The ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to high concentrations of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Since the magnetic field is constantly moving, it might be also taking the Bermuda Triangle with it. Now that people know where the triangle is, it's easy to avoid it. It supposedly moves eastward together with the magnetic poles. But scientists still can't answer where exactly it will be in a couple of years. Some people blame all the disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. There's another triangle in Lake Michigan. Just like the one near Bermuda, the Michigan Triangle got its shady reputation for some disappearances. The first recorded one dates back to 1679. A large vessel, one of the largest of that time, set out on an expedition. Yet once it got in the sinister triangle, it never came back. Much later, an aircraft disappeared in this triangle. The skies are usually very clear there. But back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Meanwhile, the Pacific Ocean mystery area is another sinister triangle. Off the south coast of Japan, not far away from Tokyo, there's a sea where plenty of ships met their doom, disappearing without a trace in these waters. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Triangle area. You're deviating from your original course and sailing in the wrong direction. There's the Caribbean Sea near the triangle peppered with small islands. The seafloor here isn't deep. The ship can get in shallow waters. And now the ship is stuck on a shoal and you have no idea where you are. If this were the 21st century, the ship's captain would be able to reach the shore using GPS and other modern navigation. But the most interesting thing is that the compass would work correctly this time, since the magnetic North Pole hasn't already coincided with the true one for a long time in the territory of the Bermuda Triangle. The Agonic Line is somewhere far away from here. There are no problems with navigation now. But for some reason, 
this is where ships disappear. In fact, not just here. Throughout the Atlantic Ocean, there are places where many more ships were gone. The Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of such places. One of the main reasons why many ships are lost here is that one of the most popular shipping routes in the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. And the more ships in one place, the more shipwrecks. Simple probability. Then, it just starts getting weird. Other theories say that there's a space-time rift in this region. Ships and planes fall into this rift and end up in the past or the future. But for some reason, there's not a single proof of this myth. There's no reason to think that the rift is hidden somewhere here. The base of an extraterrestrial civilization is located in the Bermuda Triangle. Visitors from other galaxies steal sea vessels along with the crew, so no one finds the wreckage of the ships. This is also a popular myth that has no scientific justification. The Kraken lives somewhere in the Triangle. It's a huge squid that sinks ships and also is a legend that sailors tell each other. However, gigantic squids live in the depths of the ocean. They can grow to the size of a half a train car, but no cases have ever been recorded where they sunk a large vessel. And in the area of the Bermuda Triangle, they have never ever been seen. People in the past didn't know about the existence of these creatures. So when they saw them for the first time, they described them as huge, terrible monsters. Giant squids are some of the most elusive creatures on Earth, and scientists had to use sonar equipment to find them. They don't like to leave the dark depths and are likely to be afraid of the sound of any ship. So that should squash the squid as a suspect. <laughs> you come to sunny California and go for a hike in the San Lucia Mountains. There, you have a strange, unpleasant feeling, as if someone's watching you. You look around but don't see a single soul. That's when you glance at the tops of distant mountains in front of you and your heart skips a beat. Up on the peaks, you can see the outline of a giant humanoid figure, arms stretched out with a magnificent full rainbow circling it. This mysterious figure is dressed in all black. You can't make out any facial expressions or detail, but you can see it moving. Then it vanishes right before your eyes. Congrats! You've just witnessed the Dark Watchers, a phenomenon that's been terrifying hikers in the California mountains for over 300 years. Even now, scientists can't give an exact explanation for this mysterious appearance. What we do know is it's completely natural probably. One theory claims that there are no silhouettes at all. The human brain just thinks up images created by shadows the clouds cast on the mountains. Over the centuries, people share stories about this legend, and their minds begin to show it, building recognizable objects. The same can happen to you, like when you see the contours of a human face on a burnt piece of toast or the shape of a dog in a passing cloud. The most accepted scientific explanation is what's called a Bakken specter. It's when sunlight gets bent by drops of fog or clouds. That explains the rainbow surrounding these figures. As for the shadow, it's only your own being stretched and projected on the mountains before you. After all, these figures usually show up when the sun is behind the witness. Natural or not, the vanishing mysterious figures scared the wits out of you. So we head to Antarctica. Snow, ice, and more blinding sun. Yep, it's a desert too. The light is almost blinding. You squint and off in the distance, you see something red sticking out from all the surrounding endless white. As you get closer, you realize it's a waterfall, an ominous red cascade flowing from the glacier. Splashes fly in all directions and stain the white snow. Don't worry, these so-called blood falls are nothing of the sort. Millions of years ago, hey, I wasn't around then, a glacier formed over a pond and blocked access to sunlight, heat, and oxygen. Then the pond managed to break through the glacier with a little trickle of water. When such salty waters with high levels of iron meets oxygen, it creates that scarlet rust color. This is the only waterfall of its kind in the world. As soon as you come to the Namib Desert, you immediately notice something very strange. Sprinkled among the dry grasslands are almost perfect circles of dirt where nothing grows. These massive polka dots are called fairy circles, and you guessed it, nobody really knows what causes them. 
the likely culprit is termites eating the grass around their underground colony. That could also explain the circle's differing sizes. The bugs continue to eat as the colony expands outwards, but they stop before they encroach on a neighboring colony. Well, that's neighborly. The patches where you do see grass show a sort of boundary separating different termite populations. So goes the theory. Heading down to Australia's Lake Hillier. Your eyes don't deceive you. Yes, that lake is bubblegum pink and is perfectly safe to swim in. The giant pink puddle is a salt lake, and it's not the only one of its kind in the world. Salt lakes are pink because of a kind of algae and other microorganisms living in them. They produce a red pigment to protect themselves from the sun. What's unique about Lake Hillier, though, is the water is still pink even if you scoop it up into a glass. And it remains bright pink all year round. The same can't be said about other pink lakes. Southeast Asia. You see a tree that looks as if someone poured paint all over it. But the rainbow eucalyptus was painted by nature. Its unusual bark changes colors over time, like a kaleidoscope. It starts off as a bright green shade, then red, orange, purple, and finally brown. Then the colorful cycle starts again. Blood rain looks more terrifying than any horror movie. But in reality, there's nothing strange or unnatural about this weather phenomenon. People have known about such scarlet-tinted rains since the times of ancient Rome. Sometimes, powerful winds lift red dust into the atmosphere and carry it far, far away. To another galaxy! (laughs) In the end, this dust gets mixed with clouds, which colors the rain. By the way, dust from coal mines can make the rain black. Pollen is responsible for yellow rains, and some other kinds of dust can turn rainwater white. Back in 2009, people in Ishikawa, Japan saw a kind of rain no one's ever seen before. It was raining tadpoles. The first reason was that the wind that day was so strong, it lifted and carried all those tadpoles away in no time. The second possible reason was that big birds such as gulls just dropped them while they were flying to their nests. Some scientists believe these creatures were hauled off the ground by a water spout and rained down later. By the way, that day, people found not only tadpoles, but also frogs and fish instead of puddles. And yep, it can be raining worms, too. Some people claim they've seen snake rains. Yikes! And instead of common raindrops, people have watched translucent jelly-like blobs falling down from the skies. Now, Australian spiders are notorious, and to frighten people, they've even learned how to rain. Spider rains are a pretty common thing in Australia because of ballooning. They climb up trees, then spin strands of silk, and that's why the wind can carry them away. Usually, people don't notice it, but when it's wet, hundreds of spiders climb up to more desirable places. People say that when it rains or snows, it's possible to see spiders literally drift down on those webs as if they were balloons. If you ever travel to the Mekong River, you'll probably have a chance to see glowing balls rising up from the water and beelining straight into the air. The locals call these the Naga fireballs. Sizes may vary, so these reddish balls can be as tiny as a cherry and as large as a watermelon. During the night, you can see dozens and sometimes even thousands of fireballs. Scientists don't have any solid explanation why it happens, but it's probably flammable gas released by the marshy environment. Still, a local superstition claims it's all because of a giant serpent living in the Mekong. Now, shelf clouds look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. These ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Breathtaking rainbow clouds appear on top of cotton-like puffy clouds after thunderstorms. The puffy clouds are low-altitude ones. When the water vapor they contain condenses, the resulting droplets act like prisms. This forms multicolored caps over the clouds. Morning glory clouds are extremely rare. They look like massive tubes stretching across the sky. Most researchers agree that these clouds appear when an updraft squeezes through the cloud. This creates the signature rolling appearance. The cool air at the back of the cloud makes it sink downward. The best, but not the only place to see morning glory is Australia's Gulf of Carpentaria. If you decide to travel there to see these clouds, choose a period from late September or October to early November. Huge white lumps over your head are called mammatus clouds. They make you believe the sky is falling. 
Most clouds form when air rises in the atmosphere, but not mammatous ones. They appear when moist and cool air goes down and mixes with dry air. The result? Unique puffed rice clouds. By the way, if you spot this phenomenon, bad weather is just around the corner. Whoa, mama! If you get to the bottom of the Caribbean just off the coast of Cuba, you'll see circular columns, paved floors, symmetrical stone structures. That's what the Cuban underwater city looks like. Why was a large city abandoned? Lots of people believe the ruins once belonged to a long-forgotten civilization. But scientists have their doubts. They claim the lost city is nothing but a natural phenomenon that appeared about 5 million years ago. Such disc and donut structures often occur around the areas of the seafloor where natural gases break free. Those who have ever heard an annoying sound a kettle makes when the water is boiling can't imagine what the whistle sounds like. Even though this noise isn't as blood-curdling as some other unexplained sounds, it doesn't make the whistle any less mysterious. It's incredibly elusive. In 1997, only one underwater microphone was able to pick it up. At that time, researchers didn't manage to pinpoint the source of the noise. The most likely cause of the unusual sound is the eruption of one of the submarine volcanoes. But once again, there's not enough proof to make sure. Mm. Ah, beautiful. You're walking with your friend and look up at the sky. The sun looks a bit different today. Like it has some kind of ring around it. A rainbow type thing. Huh. Look at that. Your friend pulls his head up out of his phone. You shouldn't look directly at the... Stop everything! He says, it's a sun halo. We need to find shelter now, unless you have the world's biggest umbrella on you. A sun halo is nature's sign that there's a snow or rainstorm on its way. It's caused by clouds that are made of bazillions of small ice crystals. Sunlight goes through those crystals, which causes the light to split and refract, like when there's a rainbow. Now, don't look at the sun halo directly. It's going to be tempting because it's not something you see every day. Plus, it's really beautiful. But ultraviolet light can burn the exposed tissue of your retina and cause serious damage, so it's not worth it. Grab some sunglasses and you're good to go. This phenomenon lasts around 40 minutes. These clouds are the same ones that can cause a spooky ring around the moon at night sometimes. In June 2020, what the people were looking at was an anvil cloud a rare storm formation in the sky. Formed when strong air currents carry water vapor upwards, the air expands and spreads out as it hits the bottom of the stratosphere. It pushes the dense cloud into the cool anvil shape you see, and sometimes it even gets to be a mushroom. Anvil clouds produce some of the most dangerous lightning of all storms, one that's called a bolt out of the blue. This lightning strike seems to magically come out of the blue sky, with the storm being many miles away. This type of bolt comes from the top of the anvil and can be 10 times more powerful than a typical lightning strike. People got so frightened after witnessing a giant cloud that they thought something terrible must have happened. The locals had pictures of the large billow on social media before officials could explain what was going on. Authorities managed to calm everyone's fears by informing them it was nothing more than a natural phenomenon, and a beautiful one at that. Before dissipating, these clouds typically stay in one area, regardless of how strong the wind is. If you look off the western coast of France, you'll see the Isle of Ré. Thanks to its beautiful blue waters, clean sandy beaches, and stunning lighthouses, this place is a very popular vacation spot. But perhaps the coolest part about the island of Ray is what you see just beyond the shore. Square waves. This strange wave pattern looks like a giant chessboard over the ocean. Many visitors to the island become captivated by these waves and go to high up places like nearby lighthouses to take pictures of this natural phenomenon. They say that when looking down at these square patterns in the water, it's almost as if there's some sort of metal grid underneath it. And while these wave patterns are truly fascinating, the people who choose to enjoy them from afar are doing it right. They know to stay out of the water. To understand how these square waves come to be, it's important to know how waves occur in the first place. Generally, waves can travel many miles over the surface of the water, 
depending on local winds and weather. And even on days when the weather seems somewhat calm, storms located elsewhere can send in crashing waves that affect the surrounding calm waters. When waves travel onto the shores of distant lands, they're called swells. This is different from a wave that occurs from local wind. When two different swells coming from opposite directions meet, it's known as a cross sea. This is what generates these square waves you see near the Isle of Rhe. While these waves are one of the reasons why people flock to this island, they can still expect to enjoy calm, relaxing waters most of the time. The cross sea only occurs during certain times of the year in specific weather. Plus, it's common knowledge around Ray to steer clear of the ocean when these square waves appear. So it's not often that you hear about anyone getting caught in them because most people know better. And since a lot of people on the island are tourists, there are plenty of signs around warning them to get out of the water during this time. However, not everyone gets the memo. There have been a handful of cases where people got caught in the cross sea, but thankfully and luckily, they managed to get out safely. These square waves have become somewhat famous over time, given that there's really no other place in the world that boasts a cross sea like this one. In fact, no one has ever spotted square waves anywhere but the island of Ray. However, there are swells that can be found throughout the oceans in the world, and a cross sea can take place. But if the angle they approach each other at is more shallow, the wave may actually look like it's coming from the same direction, even when it's not. Not to mention, swells can slowly lose momentum as they drift further and further away. So their crest, or the top of the wave, appears more round and less jagged. The Island of Ray's specific wind and weather patterns are literally the perfect storm and create a cross sea that people can clearly recognize. It's 2009 in Italy. A man was hanging out in his kitchen. Then he saw some flickering lights. He knew just what to do. He moved his family to a safe place. A couple of seconds later, a massive earthquake hit the whole region. His family survived thanks to his quick reaction. He knew these flickering lights were actually a sign of an upcoming earthquake. People have been seeing these mysterious lights for ages. Some thought it was some kind of sign coming from space. Scientists never used to take them seriously, but after the invention of photography, more and more evidence of these strange lights appeared. Soon, they realized the connection. The lights appear, and pretty soon, the earthquake hits. After a bit of digging around, they actually found some records of these earthquake lights from hundreds of years ago. There were bluish flames coming out of the ground right before an earthquake. Oh, creepy. The Christmas Island Crab is part of an amazing phenomenon once a year. Their migration period is determined by the phase of the moon and the first rainfall between October and February, although the precise date can't be predicted. Once the crabs have been prompted, they leave their homes amongst the forest and migrate in massive hordes towards the sea. Numbering in millions, a sea of red crabs is observed as they make their journey across the island, creating roadblocks and making their way to the ocean. There, they lay their eggs and then make their trek back, returning to the forest until the next year. There are bridges in the Indian state of Meghlahaya that are created entirely of living tree roots. The bridges are made up of tangled thick roots that are strong enough to hold over 50 people at a time. The Kasi and Jaintia tribes became masters in the art of growing these insane bridges. They need them to cross the streams below with ease. Some of these root bridges are over 180 years old. To make them, the members of the tribes care for the roots until they grow long enough to reach the opposite bank. It can take as long as 10 to 15 years to grow a bridge. In the process, the roots become tightly entwined with one another. This is how the bridges get so strong. And once a bridge is fully grown, it can last for over 500 years. While some roots decay, new ones are continually growing. That's why the unusual natural constructions last so long. Light pillars are colorful beams of light that either jet up from Earth towards the sky 
or shine down from the clouds. Usually, they only occur in cold temperatures, as they form when the sunlight gets reflected off ice crystals floating in the air. The higher the crystals are in the air, the taller these bright and colorful pillars become. They're most common at sunrise and sunset. There are hidden caves all over the world that are filled with glowing light. This light comes from hundreds of glowworms that have made a cozy home in the caves. Some of the caves are more than 30 million years old, and most of them can be found in New Zealand and Australia. The worms themselves don't actually glow, but baby worms, called larvae, form silk strings made out of mucus. These strings form nets. It's these nets that can illuminate the entire cave. Their purpose is to attract flies and other tasty insects for the glowworms to munch on. Rainbow trees are 100% a real thing. Hailing from the Philippines and Indonesia, these colorful wonders are called rainbow eucalyptus, or rainbow gum. The rainbow hues are created by the contrast in colors of old and new bark. As the thin surface layers of bark peel away, they reveal newer ones with brighter, more eye-catching colors. The brand new bark is green, then it changes to purple, then red, and finally brown. This is because the trees contain a substance called chlorophyll. It makes the bark green. As each strip of bark ages, it loses chlorophyll and slowly changes its color. Imagine working seven days a week on a large-scale construction site. You, along with thousands of others, carry millions of stone blocks and put them on top of each other according to a complex system. You work without modern construction equipment. You have no air conditioning or constant access to water. It's so hot outside that you can fry eggs on the road. You've been building the pyramid for decades. And now, when it's finally done, you enjoy the result of the colossal work of thousands of people. You're looking at a giant cultural monument of global value that will freeze in time and amaze people for tens of thousands of years. A few thousand years have passed. People in the 21st century see the pyramids and are like, wow, I can't believe humans have built this. Yeah, the people who built the pyramids wouldn't have appreciated such a theory. But actually, there are reasons to believe that people built it using some fantastic technology. From the outside, it seems the Great Pyramids are just big triangles of stone. People just put some heavy blocks on top of each other, and that's it. In fact, the design seems too perfect to be true. The pyramid consists of more than two million blocks. They lay so close to each other and are so even that you couldn't squeeze even a thin sheet of paper between them. Scientists still can't figure out the exact technology for building the Egyptian pyramids. One of the biggest and most famous is the Great Pyramid of Giza. This huge construction, well known all over the world, has one big secret. There should be a capstone on top of the pyramid. It's a triangular shaped stone block, a small pyramid on top of a huge one. It's also called a pyramidion. The builders of ancient Egypt made it out of granite and limestone and covered it with gold. No records or old drawings prove that there was a pyramidion at the top of the Great Pyramid of Giza. But there's another ancient Egyptian structure with such a triangle, the Red Pyramid. It was built before the Great One, and its capstone has survived to this day. Archaeologists have found and reconstructed it. But where could the capstone of the Great Pyramid be? It's a mystery that still has no answer. Some are sure that some thieves have stolen it from the top. Maybe they just climbed up and pushed the Pyramidian down. It makes perfect sense. The capstone was probably the most valuable element of the pyramid. Many scientists and archaeologists still don't know its exact purpose. Some believe that this peak covered with gold glorified the pharaohs. The capstone reflected moonlight at night and illuminated the entire space around it. During the day, the capstone reflected sunlight with its shiny surface. You could have noticed it from afar. The top of the pyramid was a kind of guiding star for lost travelers. All 
other stone blocks of the pyramid consist of limestone. People polish them to make them look shiny. In the past, they were even glowing and reflected light. You could see glowing pyramids from space, although they looked like tiny lights. Over thousands of years, winds, sandstorms, and rains have changed the pyramid's appearance. If people had taken care of them all this time, they would have looked like something out of science fiction movies or the pyramids from Las Vegas. But unfortunately, we will never see their original appearance. Some archaeologists and scientists believe that the capstone could absorb the sun's energy and distribute it evenly throughout the pyramid. No one knows precisely why the Egyptians needed this technology. There's a theory the pyramids are ancient energy systems. The pharaohs applied this energy to use some unique technologies that were more advanced than all the achievements of the 21st century. And the triangular shape of the pyramids was ideal for boosting this electromagnetic energy. In theory, solar radiation, or electromagnetic forces, accumulated at the top of the pyramid, filled the inner rooms, and then went down the walls to the base. Any surface distortion could prevent the flow from spreading, so they had to create a perfectly smooth surface. That's why they installed the blocks so that nobody could squeeze a needle or razor blade between them. Many people believe in this theory because they built the pyramids from limestone. This material can hold energy inside itself. In the inner part, they created granite deposits to cause air ionization, that is, to create an electric charge. They also dug channels under the pyramid for water to transmit electricity. And at the top, they put a gold capstone, the best conductor of electricity. So this is how you get a great power generator. Different cultures used similar technologies to create electricity all over the world. But these are all theories. If it had been working, humanity would have used these technologies today. There are mentions of the metal industry, chemistry, engineering, physics, mathematics, and astronomy in some ancient records. Most scientists don't believe in all these things. We know the detailed stages of the technology's development in different cultures. In the 21st century, scientists, historians, and anthropologists can track the evolution of all modern devices. If people had created some technological inventions in ancient times, the history of the world would have looked different. Perhaps all the achievements of antiquity could have been wiped off the face of the Earth by global cataclysms. And it can happen to us. Just imagine how people would dig up a laptop in 5,000 years. Perhaps they wouldn't understand what kind of device it is. Another Egyptian wonder surrounded by mystery is the statue of the Sphinx. The Egyptians carved it out of a single massive piece of limestone about 4.5 thousand years ago. But scientists still don't know the exact date of its construction or who built it. People painted the Sphinx in different colors, so it looked much brighter and more vivid in the distant past. It was shining just like the Great Pyramids. Anyway, time hasn't only changed its appearance, but its name too. Initially, the Egyptians called it Horemeket. The Greeks renamed it the Sphinx about a few hundred years after it had been built. The Sphinx emphasized the greatness of the rulers of Egypt. It also performed a symbolic function of a watchdog guarding the tomb of the pharaoh and the paths leading to it. This version sounds realistic, since archaeologists have discovered many secret entrances at the foot of the Sphinx. Perhaps these rooms and intricate tunnels lead to underground halls with treasures. And treasures don't always mean gold and jewelry. According to legends and theories, the Sphinx guards the Hall of Records, the storage of all humankind's knowledge. The information about the ancient mythical state of Atlantis could be there. You can find many detailed maps of the internal dungeons of the Sphinx on the internet. They show structures 12 stories deep under the statue. It looks like a small city filled with gold, scrolls of knowledge, and various ancient artifacts. But don't believe all these maps. These are just theories. Several thousand years have passed, but people have very little information about it. 
archaeologists know that there are still many strange and exciting things about the Sphinx that are still undiscovered. Some locals are afraid to research because they believe they can awaken something terrible from the underground depths. Therefore, it's mostly scientists from other countries who conduct the excavations. In 1998, scientists discovered strange tunnels leading to empty rooms under the Sphinx. They realized that some people tried to get there through tunnels in the past. And maybe those people took all the treasures that were there. One of the legends says that some powerful artifact lays beneath the Sphinx. Its technology can change the whole world, but the locals are hiding it because it can damage the planet. Some believe that you can find evidence of unknown technologies painted on the granite walls in the pharaoh's tombs. But most likely, these paintings and signs tell us the myths and legends of ancient Egypt. But what if Egyptian symbols and drawings are detailed instructions for using ancient technologies? What if the locals that lived at that time thought, hmm, people in the future won't be able to get energy themselves. Let's leave some detailed instructions for them. Anyway, there are many riddles and theories. In reality, the search for answers is a dangerous undertaking, since it's not easy to get into the underground halls. Excavations can ruin the structure of the entire Sphinx. Any person inside the tunnels may get lost and never be able to find their way back. Besides, it costs a lot of money. Now what would be awesome is if people could invent some device that could scan underground areas and show their detailed models. Kwajan Volcano in Indonesia is not your ordinary lava-belching mountain. Instead of producing black smoke and red lava, as most volcanoes do, this eccentric guy lets out a blue flame, an electric blue lava. This phenomenon occurs because the volcano contains some of the highest levels of sulfur in the world. And when the sulfuric gases interact with scorching air and get lit by the molten lava, they start to turn blue. Unfortunately, you can see this mesmerizing sight only at night, but you can smell it all day long. By the way, the world's largest acid lake is also located inside this crater. The Dead Sea has a high concentration of salt and minerals compared to other seas, even though it's technically a lake. Swimming is almost impossible, but people go there for the natural chemicals for the body. Floating on the surface is a great way to relax. This ancient body of water got its name because no macroscopic organisms can live there since it's 9.6 times saltier than oceans. Only a few bacteria and fungi can be found enjoying the salt. It's also Earth's lowest elevation on land at 1,400 feet below sea level. An underground crystal cave exists in Mexico, and it looks like some interstellar world. It's roughly a thousand feet beneath the surface, with each spike measuring up to 35 feet in length and weighing up to 55 tons. These are some of the largest crystals in the world. Luscantire Beach is an endless strand of white sand dunes in azure water. But don't let the tropical vibes fool you. It's located in Scotland. That's why it mostly looks like this during May and June only. In December, the place gets only an average of one hour of sunshine per day making it way more dramatic in monochrome. The Georgia Guide Stones is a collection of giant stones in a star pattern. It has inscriptions in eight languages, including Hindi, Chinese, and Swahili. It also has an astronomical calendar finished in 1980 and was built the last centuries. No one knows who built it or why. All the way over in sunny California is Sequoia National Park, home to the giant forest. It's been around for thousands of years. More than 8,000 of these colossal trees rule the land, including 10 of the largest living plants in the world. The General Sherman Sequoia is estimated to be up to 2,700 years old and is recognized as the world's largest known living tree by volume. The famous stone heads of Easter Island have been around for hundreds of years. No one knows exactly why they were built. Some scientists think that local people believe the statues would make the soil more fertile. Soil analysis proved the heads did their job well. It's the best agricultural spot on the island. The chemical composition of the ancient hot springs in Pamukkale, Turkey, makes the water pouring over the edge look magical. 
They're not only good for cleansing your body, but the mind, too. All the way in Saudi Arabia is a rock sliced perfectly in the middle with two pieces sitting parallel. What makes al Nasla so unique is that it wasn't artificially done, but is a result of nature's work over the years. Now this glacier may look like someone dropped tons of red paint in the middle of Antarctica, but it's actually the natural color. Blood falls is a result of extreme salted water mixed with iron oxide, giving out this eerie vibe in the middle of nowhere. In early May 2018, New England observed one of the scariest and most dangerous phenomena ever, a super long track tornado. The frightening natural phenomenon started not far from Charleston, New Hampshire, and traveled toward the town of Webster in Merrimack County. It took the tornado 33 minutes to cover 36 miles and become the third on the list of the longest track tornadoes in New England. In the Philippines, you can swim in some of the most crystal clear waters and discover an underwater world below you in the province of Palawan. The municipality of Koran has white sandy beaches with many small boats riding through the many amazing sceneries. Tristan da Cunha is a small volcanic archipelago in the Atlantic with the only neighboring cities of Buenos Aires, Argentina, and Cape Town, South Africa. It takes seven days by ship to get to this unique place. If you want to escape from the rest of the world, staying with the 280 locals will make you feel like you're away from everything. During the first week of January 2018, unusually cold weather in the Northeast United States froze the Atlantic Ocean in North Falmouth, Massachusetts. What's more, the ocean was frozen so thoroughly that people were walking on the waves. Now, that's obviously something you don't see every day. Red sand is what makes this beach unique and why tourists flock to Tianjin, China. A red-colored plant called a sueda salsa dwells in the salt water. The whole beach is covered in red, with only the top layer of the sea visible. If there ever was a thing that said, I defy gravity out loud, it's the stone of Davasco in Argentina. The huge 300-ton boulder stands precariously on the edge of a cliff and rocks a little bit from side to side in the wind. People even checked it by putting glass bottles under one of its edges. They exploded with another movement of the rock. Unfortunately today, you can't see this wonder of nature as it was a century ago. In 1912, the boulder suddenly dropped from its perch, which it had occupied for literally hundreds of years. The people of the nearby town of Tandil were so sad about this event that 95 years later, in 2007, they decided to restore the stone. They made a plastic replica of the rock and put it on the same spot and even in the same position. So even today, coming by Tandil, you can see its famous balancing boulder. More of a symbol now, of course, because it's no longer rocking and only weighs 9 tons, but instantly recognizable nonetheless. Socatra is an alien-like island off the coast of Yemen in the Indian Ocean with one of the most unique trees ever seen. It's called the Dragon Tree, and it can only be found on this amazing island. In 2008, it was labeled as a World Heritage Site. If you ever see a tight-burning column of air, don't panic, it's not the end of the world! The creepy combination of whirlwind sounds and scorching inferno means that you have crossed paths with a fire tornado, also known as fire twister or fire whirl. This dangerous phenomenon occurs mostly during wildfires. These fires create a big area of super hot air just above the ground. When this scorching air gets mixed with the cooler air higher up, it results in a whirlwind that churns up burning debris and flames. The most powerful fire nados can stretch hundreds of feet into the air. The House of Mystery in Gold Hill, Oregon amazes its visitors with gravity-defying effects. You can't stand straight there, always leaning to the side and having to hold on to something for balance. Balls roll upwards. There's also a broom that stands perfectly still wherever you put it, unlike virtually everything else in the shack. The local Native American tribes called this place the Forbidden Ground even before the house was built there, and they avoid approaching it. The owners of the shack, though, decided to turn it into an attraction, and they succeeded. They created an atmosphere of mystery around the place, and spread the news about it in newspapers and later on the internet, and voila! A perfect anomaly is made. In fact, it's no more than a curiosity. 
a human-made optical illusion that tricks your eyes and other senses. Now, if you travel to the Philippines, Indonesia, or Papua New Guinea, you'll have a chance to see some of the most unusual and cheerful trees in the world. The trunk of the rainbow eucalyptus looks as if it had been painted orange, green, red, purple, yellow, brown, blue, hey, you name it. Some trees are so bright that they seem artificial. The rainbow eucalyptus regularly sheds strips of bark, which reveals a bright green layer underneath. A bit later, this green layer gradually changes its color. And since the shedding happens at a different time in different places on the trunk, the tree starts to look multicolored and very attractive. Yemen is home to the oldest skyscrapers in the world and the oldest metropolis. The ancient city of Shabam is considered to be the Manhattan of the desert, due to the collection of mud buildings popping out of the desert floor. It used to be a caravan stop during ancient times. There are places on Earth over which planes can't fly. They are restricted airspace zones you can't enter for security or secrecy reasons. There are five types of protected zones, areas of cultural, political, historical, and environmental significance, and areas that are protected to ensure visitors' safety. Let's have a look at the most famous of them. Firstly, it's Washington, D.C. and the White House. It's a very protected zone. No one can fly over it if they're less than 18,000 feet above sea level. There's an airport close to the White House, and the restrictions cause a lot of trouble for pilots and passengers. Pilots have to maneuver very carefully so that they don't accidentally enter the restricted zone, because the consequences are quite severe. Passengers usually don't have a very pleasant time at the beginning of their flight, all because of the maneuvers pilots have to perform trying to avoid entering the protected zone. Once in 2005, a pilot accidentally veered into this zone, and just because of it, the capital was evacuated. They don't take any chances. If there's someone or something in the protected airspace, it's assumed to be dangerous by default. Next up is Camp David. It was built back in 1938 in the countryside of Maryland. Originally, the camp was called High Caddicton. Built in 1953, the USA's 34th president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, named it Camp David, in honor of his father and grandson. Camp David is the U.S. president's country residence. It is also used to host the representatives of foreign countries. Since there are so many important people staying in this place, there is a three-mile no-fly zone around it and a five-mile above-sea-level no-fly zone over it. The next place is also important to one of the former American presidents. The Bush family compound is the summer residence of George Bush's family in Maine. The family still visits there often so you can't fly over this place if the altitude is lower than 1,000 feet above sea level. Another no-fly zone is the Kennedy Space Center. No one can travel over it if they're flying less than 5,000 feet above sea level. This place is so protected because of NASA's activities on and around the island. The next place is located here, in northern Minnesota, at the border with Canada. This is a wilderness zone called the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. It's a national recreation area and the most visited wilderness area in the United States, where many people go hiking, fishing, and canoeing. The protection of this beautiful natural spot started in 1902. In 1949, the airspace over the entire region within 4,000 feet above sea level became protected too. Motorboats and snowmobiles are also prohibited there, all to protect the natural beauty and the wilderness of the place. Another place on my list is, you'd never guess it, Disneyland and Disney World. Since Disneyland's airspace has the protection level of the White House and the Kennedy Space Center, it's prohibited to fly over the theme park without a special waiver, and the restriction goes 3,000 feet above sea level. The law was introduced in 2003 to ensure the safety of the park and its visitors. These days, you'll never see a plane or even a single drone flying over the place, unless they've got a special permission waiver. 
Now, let's go global. It's not only the United States that has such bans. There are many more protected places like the ones I've already mentioned around the world. Let's start with this huge hole in the Earth's surface. It has a diameter of 3,900 feet. It's greater than the height of the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. In fact, it's 1.5 Burj Khalifas and it's also more than 1,700 feet deep, which means the pit could fit a 140-story building. The giant pit is a diamond mine located in Myrny, a town in Siberia. The average winter temperature here is negative 31 degrees Fahrenheit. You can't fly a helicopter over the mine because it's dangerous. The mine is so big that it messes up with the flow of air. The air within the mine is way warmer than it is outside. And when these two air flows mix, it creates a vortex. If a helicopter flies by, the vortex will likely pull it in. Then the machine will lose altitude and crash. Another place is Buckingham Palace. Flying over this building is banned to protect the monarchs. The palace isn't just a place where the queen resides. It's also Great Britain's administrative headquarters, where many meetings with foreign representatives are held. Planes can't fly over Windsor Castle as well, because that's where the royal family resides. Peru has banned planes from flying over its famous landmark, Machu Picchu, in 2006. The ban was supposed to protect the landmark's heritage and its wildlife. Next up is India's Taj Mahal. The mausoleum completed in 1653 is located in Agra, in the northern part of India. It's one of the most recognized places in the world, and it's protected by UNESCO as the world's heritage site. No wonder this place, which is visited by more than 6 million people every year, is so protected. The area has been a no-fly zone since 2006. This law was enacted to protect the building and the visitors. Even though there's no official prohibition, planes prefer to avoid particular regions on our planet. One of them is the Himalayas. The Himalayan mountains are higher than 20,000 feet, and with Mount Everest, the tallest point on Earth, reaching 29,032 feet. Most planes fly at about 30,000 feet, which is too close to the mountain peak. To maintain the minimum distance, planes would have to fly higher, which is impossible. Also, the winds are too strong over the mountains, and this makes it difficult to maneuver aircraft. Planes need routes with the possibility of emergency landings and with the best radar services, just in case something goes wrong during the flight. The problem is that there's almost no radar services in the Himalayas, and pilots wouldn't be able to communicate with air traffic controllers on the ground. An emergency landing is only possible on flat surfaces, and there are none of those in the Himalayan region. The risk is simply too high with mountains everywhere. If you don't think it's already dangerous enough, there's more. If something, for example cabin decompression, happens to an aircraft at such altitude, the plane will only have enough oxygen for around 20 minutes. When this oxygen runs out, the plane must descend to at least 10,000 feet above sea level to replenish its reserves. And that's impossible to do in the Himalayas because of the mountains all over the place. Another tough route goes over the poles. And to take that one, a plane needs special approval. The problem here is that the pole can mess up the aircraft's navigational system. Compasses there go totally wild and become of no use at all. Earth's North Pole has a very strong magnetic field that's constantly changing. If the magnetic field moves, the true North starts to differ from what pilots see on their devices. Then it gets difficult for them to find the correct runway. By the way, runways are named according to how far away from the true North Pole they are. If the magnetic field moves and causes the pilot to adjust navigation, they can't be sure whether they're going to land on the correct runway. So, only several planes actually fly there, and they have to go through special preparations, get particular navigational devices, and an approval to travel there. And still, no one flies directly over the North Pole. 
Even though aircraft fly over oceans and smaller bodies of water, if there's an alternative route that goes over land, the plane will always opt for it. Interestingly, flying over water is usually smoother than flying over land, especially at lower altitudes. That's because there's less turbulence there. The main reason for turbulence is hot air rising from the ground. When you fly over water, you don't have this problem, and the flight is more comfortable. Still, flying over land is safer. I don't know about you, but I'd rather go through a bit of shaking than have no opportunity to land in case of emergency. Planes that make transoceanic flights usually have four engines. For two-engine aircraft, it's too dangerous. They prefer routes where there are many airports on the way that can accept this particular type of aircraft in case of emergency. Imagine an engine failure happens. In this case, the aircraft will have to rely on the remaining engine to take the plane to the nearest airport and land safely. There aren't so many airports in, let's say, the Pacific Ocean. Hey, ever heard of a fire rainbow? Yeah, me neither. How about a circumhorizontal arc? Didn't think so, but just so you know, they're one and the same thing. At first glance, it looks like a painting or like a rainbow-colored splash in the sky. Despite the name, they have nothing in common with either fire or rain. This phenomenon happens on rare occasions when the sun shines through a particular type of ice cloud formation. The rainbow halos are just as unique. Again, a specific type of ice crystals and clouds needs to be present for the surface of the Earth to bend light from the sun into a perfect ring. The same thing can happen with moonlight. The only difference will be that moon halos are usually white, and sun halos can be rainbow-colored. When visiting regions with high altitudes, you may be one of the lucky people to stumble upon penitentes. They're basically naturally formed ice spikes. For them to be formed, they need a really cold and elevated environment where the air is dry. The sunlight turns ice directly into vapor, rather than melting it into water. And that's why these blades of snow and ice start to pop up on the surface of the Earth. As cute as they may be, they can end up as tall as 15 feet. Now, what happens when small individual droplets of lava meet the wind? Pele's hair, basically. Let me explain. The word Pele comes from an ancient Hawaiian symbol for volcanoes. Whenever the wind picks up little drops of lava, it stretches them into hair-like strands similar to the process of glass wire creation. These delicate strands can stretch as far as 6 feet. On rare occasions, it can rain without any clouds. But does it really? Let's look at the science behind this rare phenomenon. It's sometimes called a sun shower, just because it looks like the rain is falling straight from the sun. Let's be clear though, there is no way rain can ever come down directly from a star. Rain clouds are at a bit of a distance from that specific location. With sun rays being angled, the clouds become out of sight. Add a little wind to blow the rain in your direction, and ta-da! You get sun showers. Located in Bolivia is a place called Salar de Uni. It's the largest salt flat in the world. It's also the home of half of the world's lithium, which is a crucial component for making batteries. But what else is so special about this place? Well, whenever the rain season comes, it turns this piece of flat land into a perfectly reflective mirror lake. What comes to your mind when you hear about the Blood Falls? A horror movie? <laughs> well, they are merely a series of waterfalls located in one of the driest regions of Antarctica. They emerge from an underground lake filled with a special kind of bacteria. These little organisms use sulfates as fuel instead of sugars, which makes them very intriguing for scientists. The water contained in this lake is so full of iron that it basically just rusts when it meets the air. Hence, the reddish color of the waterfall, which also gives it its trademark name. Okay, we all know the song, but it's not really made up. There is actually such a thing called a desert rose. It's not a plant, though, but a unique form of the mineral gypsum. It develops in dry sandy places that can occasionally flood. This constant switching between a wet and dry environment lets the gypsum crystals emerge between grains of sand, trapping them and forming a rose-like shape.
ever heard of the Eye of Sahara? Scientists are still trying to figure out how it was formed. You can only see it if you fly above it, but it's basically a naturally formed dome that dates back to approximately 100 million years ago. And no, I wasn't around then. It has a rough diameter of 25 miles and consists of a bunch of concentric rings. The biggest one, or the central area, measures about 19 miles in diameter. Astronauts were some of the first people to notice it, and it's been studied ever since. In fact, even to this day, when landing in Florida, they know they're almost home when they see the Eye of Sahara. One of the most beautifully colored trees in the world is located in the Philippines and Indonesia. It's called the Rainbow Eucalyptus. It got its name because of its bark that switches colors and peels away as the tree ages. The bright green bark is the youngest, as it contains a substance called chlorophyll, usually found in leaves. It then switches to purple and then to the color red. And finally, it turns brown as it grows and loses the chlorophyll. Now, don't be tricked into thinking that's a whole forest. It's one single tree. And no, it's not some sort of optical illusion either. Let me explain. Underneath that soil, there is a complex network of roots that connects around 47,000 tree-like shapes you see above the ground. It's called the quaking aspen. Some of these trees are among the oldest and largest organisms in the world. Now, here's a good destination for all travelers, or maybe not so good after all. The most lightning-stricken area in the world, according to recent data released by NASA, is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. Out of all the days in a year, 300 of them feature thunderstorms in this location. What makes this area so unique, though, that storms happen so often? Well, it's because where cool mountain air meets the warm, moist breeze and generates electricity over the lake. The Eternal Flame Falls are located in upstate New York, near the Canadian border. In this region, there is a tiny waterfall with a big secret – a spark about 8 inches tall. Turns out there's a natural gas seat that provides fuel to the flame behind the waterfall. The waterfall provides enough coverage so that it stays lit pretty much every time. Hikers do enjoy to relight it if they see that it's been blown out. This phenomenon is actually quite common, but this one gained more popularity because it is younger than most. And it looks very good in pictures, let's be honest. I've heard of yellow sand, white sand, and even black sand here or there. But I've never heard of green beaches until now. Papacolia, also known as Green Sand Beach, is located in Hawaii and is one of the few beaches in the world that features green sand. The unique coloring comes from olivine rock that was formed when a nearby volcano erupted. Actually, in Hawaii, all the volcanoes are nearby. Move over green sands because some of the other beaches around the world can even glow at night. And it's completely natural. The culprit? A little thing called photoplankton, or microalgae, as they're sometimes called. They're basically little plants that contain chlorophyll and need sunlight in order to live and grow. Most photoplankton kinds are able to float in the upper part of the ocean, where the sunlight can still reach them beneath the water. When the photoplankton gets agitated by the movement of waves and currents, they emit light, which looks like some glow during the night. These special microorganisms are found on beaches in a lot of places around the world, such as the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and the Everglades. At the base of a mountain located just outside of Afton, Wyoming, is a little river called the Intermittent Spring. There are only three of this kind in the whole world, but what makes this little string of water so mysterious? Well, the fact that it starts and stops every few minutes. Scientists have yet to pinpoint precisely why this happens. They speculate that it's basically just a siphon effect that happens deep within the ground that causes the river to just start and stop so often. Should you ever be interested in checking it out, be sure to do so in the late summer, as that's when the intermittent spring is most active. Do you see the irony here? You can only see the spring in the summer? Okay, I'm done. Ah, Kiev. You've been dreaming of getting here for years. Getting out your trusty camera, you start taking pictures of the cathedrals, aviation museum, and the Dnipro River, 
when without warning, there's an enormous boom behind you. Turning around, you see something towering in the distance. It looks like a gigantic explosion. Uh Uh-oh, time to leave fast! In June 2020, what the people of Kiev were looking at was an anvil cloud, a rare storm formation in the sky. Forming when strong air currents carry water vapor upwards, the air expands and spreads out as it hits the bottom of the stratosphere. It pushes the dense cloud into the cool anvil shape you see, and sometimes it even gets to be a mushroom. Anvil clouds produce some of the most dangerous lightning of all storms, one that's called a bolt out of the blue. This lightning strike seems to magically come out of the blue sky with the storm being many miles away. This type of bolt comes from the top of the anvil and can be 10 times more powerful than a typical lightning strike. People got so frightened after witnessing a giant cloud just 60 miles away, thinking something terrible must have happened. The locals had pictures of the large billow on social media before officials could explain what was going on. Authorities managed to calm everyone's fears by informing them it was nothing more than a natural phenomenon, and a beautiful one at that. Before dissipating, these clouds typically stay in one area, regardless of how strong the wind is. Touring around the northern tip of Queensland, Australia, way away from those creepy crawlies, it's time to take a break and relax at the beach. Getting comfortable, you notice a great big shadow passes over you, then another, and yet another. Looking up, this weird weather is simply stunning. The clouds are called morning glory, a very rare type of cloud that almost seems to roll across the sky, looking like a massive tube. These clouds can measure up to 600 miles long, even appearing in large groups as well. This phenomenon is the result of an updraft pushing through the cloud, creating a rolling appearance, while moist cooler air at the back causes them to sink downward. Southern India, between July and September 2001. People witnessed one of the strangest weather phenomenon in recorded history. The rain was red. What many would have thought to be a typical rainstorm left them shocked. The color was bright enough to stain clothes. There were other colors too, such as green, yellow, brown, and even black. In the middle of a monsoon, red rain started to fall and did so periodically for several weeks. Researchers have found this unusual rain is stained either by dust or algae, so don't try to catch any on your tongue. Scientists aren't entirely sure how the algae got all the way up there. This does make events like this a little unsettling. Like to take a bubble bath to relax after an exhausting day, but taking too long to fill the bathtub? Problem solved! Head to any coastline after a big storm and take a dip. Foamy tides aren't native to any one place or location. They can be formed anywhere in the world. They're most likely to happen along rocky coastlines, like the coast of San Francisco, Northern Ireland, or the Mooloolaba, Australia. Each coast has differing conditions forming the sea foams. If you scoop up seawater into a glass and look at it closely, you'll see it's full of tiny particles. Many things like plants, chemicals, and lots of salt and minerals create the perfect formula for foam. When powerful currents and wind mix it all together, we get something that resembles a cappuccino top floating on top of the water. When freezing temperatures hit orchards in Michigan, all kinds of unusual things happen like ghost apples. No, they're not going to scare you at all. But if you plan on sneaking away one winter to find one, be warned. Everything has to be perfect for this to occur, and it's going to be freezing cold. This is actually a rare weather phenomenon caused by having the apples freeze where they are with rain coating the fruit in a thin layer of ice. The apples then thaw and leak out like applesauce, leaving just the beautiful ice shell behind. The Catatumbo River in Venezuela might be the most electric place in the world, with nearly 300 storm days per year. The lightning storms are so consistent, 
They're predicted for three months in advance. During the wet season in October, you might see 30 lightning flashes in a single minute, a truly shocking experience. With each bolt having the energy to power a single light bulb for six months, the impressive display could power all of Venezuela forever. At sunset, strong winds flow around the three surrounding mountains, forming storm clouds over the water. As the water droplets of humid air collide with ice crystals from the cold air, it produces the static charges that cause the lightning storms nearly every night. If that wasn't bad enough, some storms have lightning above them as well. Try to take a picture of this one. Jellyfish lightning sprites are electrical discharges high in Earth's atmosphere. They're associated with powerful thunderstorms, but they have nothing to do with rain. These sprites occur 30 to 50 miles up in the sky, in the mesosphere. Artificial lights at night make it a lot harder to see this faint lightning. If you spot one, it'll look tiny, but can be well over 30 miles wide. The red sprites are a type of cold plasma discharge above a thundercloud. They're the balance of the lightning charges between the storm clouds and the ground below. Don't try to find this type of donut at your favorite bakery. It won't be there. Snow donuts are one of the rarest meteorological sights to see, with perfect weather conditions needed just to create them. Found in any snow-covered mountain area, like the Rocky Mountains, the wind, temperature, snow, ice, and moisture have to all work together for us to see these phenomenal rings. A thin layer of wet snow on the ground. Under that layer, ice or powdered snow. Then, a strong enough breeze to roll the donut down a hill, just like a snowball. Once it stops rolling, it can be the size of a baseball or as large as a car tire. It all depends on how strong the wind is. A newly formed snow donut won't stay around for very long, so hurry up with that camera! Watching the sunset over the horizon, the beautiful purples and pink overhead are nothing compared to the three suns you see in front of you. Wow, since when did Earth get three suns? These phantom stars sometimes appearing beside the sun are called sun dogs. Maybe they're called that because they're kind of dogging the actual sun? <laughs> sun dogs often appear as colored areas of light at the same height above the horizon as the sun. They're mostly observed on a ring or halo, where ice crystals best reflect the light. There are also moon dogs that appear alongside the moon and are formed by lunar light passing through ice crystals, though these aren't seen nearly as much as their daytime partners. Taking photos in the wild you finally found the perfect spot to take that dream shot. The crystal clear water, the pines, the mountains, and the flying saucer. Wait, a flying saucer? Oh, aliens are here! <clears throat> you might be thinking this if you saw a saucer-shaped cloud. I'm not even going to try to pronounce their name, though. Put that on the screen, please. Wait, just kidding. It's Alto Cumulus Lenticularis. Aren't you impressed? These are really just unusual cloud formations over mountaintops. When moist air flows over a mountain, a wave is created if the temperature difference is perfect. As the air passes through the wave, evaporation occurs and a series of these clouds may form into an oval shape. Not aliens at all. Whew. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Well. People who have experienced these clouds say they look like they're coming down from the sky. Mammatus clouds look like giant white lumpy marshmallows, but it might be hard to toast these ones. These weird fluffy clouds can extend hundreds of miles in any direction, remaining visible for short periods at the bottom of anvil or other thunderstorm clouds. The strange bubble shapes are formed from turbulence within the storm itself creating an uneven cloud base and appearing anywhere in the world. Mammatus clouds form when moist air sinks into dry air. The air must be cooler than its surroundings, cooled with ice, or be heavy with water. 
that's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. 80% of what's deep inside the world's oceans remains hidden to this day. That's because the ocean covers 70% of the planet's surface, and we only have access to a small portion of that. We can clearly see around 3 miles deep down inside the ocean. So it's no surprise that our most recent discoveries when it comes to wildlife come from the ocean. I mean, there's a lot to explore, like this new shark species called the genie's dogfish, or the longest animal ever found, a 154-foot-long jellyfish, which we just stumbled upon earlier this year in Australia. Somewhere in the Arctic and Antarctic seas, a strange phenomenon appears, confusing people to say the least. It's called frost flowers, but they're not plants at all, merely ice crystals. Frost grows on the long stem plants that manage to break the thin layer on the surface of young sea ice. Frost flowers aren't just made of water, though. They have a variety of microorganisms within, making them a small, temporary ecosystem. Turns out we don't have volcanoes just on the visible surface of the Earth. Submarine volcanoes are just as disruptive to their surrounding wildlife. If the data we have so far is correct, the ocean has the most productive volcanic systems on Earth, most of them being on average 8,500 feet below the surface of the water. A maelstrom, a powerful and at times dangerous whirlpool, is a source of nightmares for seafarers to this day. What sets a maelstrom apart from other whirlpools is that it comes in an extraordinary size and force. It's so powerful, it can even put larger ships in a lot of trouble. One of the most famous of them is called Naruto, and it's located near Awaji Island. Its tides move in and out from 8 to 12 miles per hour twice a day, making it one of the fastest in the world. The sinking of the Titanic is the historical event that made icebergs famous, am I right? Well, sometimes these icebergs even come with colored stripes. They can be brown, black, green, yellow, and blue. Obviously, they're called striped icebergs, and they get their colors from various natural reasons. Like the blue ones, for example, which turn up when the ice melts and freezes back up very quickly. If there are green stripes in the iceberg, it probably means it has some algae stuck somewhere in there. Other more earth tone colors, like brown, yellow, or black, have other things to blame, like sediments the seawater picks up before freezing. Back in March 2019, scientists stumbled upon one of the most baffling phenomena ever to be found in the sea. During the exploration of one of the underwater volcanoes, they noticed what looked like a small lake, which was upside down. It was at least 6,500 feet below sea level. If you think that doesn't make any sense, well, that's because it's not real. Turns out it was nothing more than an optical illusion generated by the liquid in these upside-down pools. It gets up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit hot, and it's made of some harsh chemicals like sulfur and metals, which makes the illusion possible. The world's largest waterfall is also safely tucked underwater. It's located beneath the Denmark Strait, a portion of water that stands between Iceland and Greenland. If you suddenly grow fish gills, dive in there, and manage to comfortably breathe underwater, you'll be able to see a series of waterfalls that begin at 2,000 feet under the surface, but then drop down to a depth of 10,000 feet. In 2011, Swedish treasure hunters discovered an object on the bottom of the Baltic Sea that they described as strange and mysterious. It's oval shaped with unusual stair formations. The head of the team who made the discovery supposed it must have been constructed tens of thousands of years ago, even before the Ice Age, and could have been part of the underwater city of Atlantis. Experts who analyzed the object believe it to be a regular glacial deposit or some other natural formation, but they still don't know for sure. Now, they don't call it the Black Sea for nothing. Located at the southeastern extremity of Europe, it even has sea smoke, which is basically steam coming out of the surface of the water. This happens because of the humidity of the oceanic water, which neutralizes the cooler wind blowing on the water surface, creating this vapor-like phenomenon. 
If you ever check out the ocean surface during sunset and sunrise, you might get lucky enough to see green flashes. You'll have to pay attention, though, because it merely lasts for a couple of seconds. They happen because of the natural prismatic effect of the atmosphere of the Earth. During sunsets and sunrises, light emerging from the sun gets diverged into multiple colors, a process that looks like there's a green flash emitted by the water. Red tides do happen a lot of times, and although there's no need to panic when you see one of those, you still must be careful. The technical term for this phenomenon is algal blooming. It happens when there's a rapid growth or blooming of algae in the waters of the ocean. Because of the chemicals these algae contain, they may be trouble for birds, animals, and even humans. So don't be so quick to jump into the waters should you ever experience it. Octopuses and squid have a special trait that sets them apart from other sea creatures. They have three hearts. While wow, Valentine's Day must be very special for them. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make them more romantic, but they do need these three hearts to function properly. They have one major heart that helps with circulation all around their bodies, and two bronchial hearts that are responsible for pumping near their gills. So, with three hearts and eight arms, when the octopus hugs you, you'll know she's very sincere. Based on a study published in 2013, dolphins have names for each other, particularly bottlenose dolphins, which have their own special whistles, just like human names. Not only do they develop this type of whistle to present themselves to other dolphins, but they can also learn other such names so they can better communicate with each other. In the depths of the Pacific Ocean, there's a mysterious singing whale, which scientists have yet to fully understand. They call it the loneliest whale because it emits sounds at a much higher pitch than any other blue whale we've ever encountered. No one has ever seen it, though, so researchers believe its strange tune may be keeping it from actually finding a partner. Oh. Now, standard blue whales have their own particular quirk. Their hearts are more than 5 feet long. They're also about 4 feet wide and can weigh more than 400 pounds. Just to give you a better idea, your heart is roughly the size of your fist, so that would be smaller. Not that we aren't a bit intimidated by sea creatures already, but just so you know, sharks can sometimes grow thousands of teeth. And not just one or two thousand, up to 30,000 teeth over their lifetime to be precise. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see a shark's dentist bill. <laughs> Something to chew on. Scientists have yet to identify a creature on Earth that can actually live forever, but it looks like this is about to change. A tiny jellyfish that's even smaller than the nail on your pinky appears to be the living embodiment of Benjamin Button. That's because it has the ability to go back to a previous developing stage whenever it's in danger or extremely hungry and out of food. It's no surprise they earn themselves the nickname the Immortal Jellyfish. We've known about this species for hundreds of years, but it took us until the 1990s to discover their unique characteristics. We're yet to be sure how it's able to produce cells that regress and regrow, but they could hold a secret that might help advances in medicine for both animals and humans. A strange lake appeared in India 52,000 years ago. It was formed here literally out of nowhere. I recall it was a Wednesday. Anyway, for tens of thousands of years, people came up with various scary stories about the lake. Some locals believe this place was cursed. Others think that the lake's bottom hides the gateway to the underworld. But those are all legends. The real reason for the appearance of this Lonar Lake is even more surprising. At first, scientists were sure that the lake was an ancient crater of a long-extinct volcano. It's in a balsam field made of 65-million-year-old volcanic rock. But then, geologists conducted a detailed analysis of the soil and water, and found that Lonar Lake had a space origin. Geologists found a unique glass inside the lake that forms only with a strong impact and energy release. 52,000 years ago, a huge meteorite weighing 2 million tons fell into this place. It was almost six times heavier than the Empire State Building. The striking power was so high that the volcanic rock melted and turned into glass. Perhaps the bottom of this lake still contains particles of this giant meteorite that flew to us from the distant space depths. 
Okay, we have a lake created by a space object more than 50,000 years ago. But even this is not the strangest thing about it. In 2020, the locals noticed that Lonar Lake had turned pink. In just a few days, the salt water mysteriously changed its color. Biologists and geologists immediately took water samples to the Scientific Research Center. The detailed analysis showed that the water contained an increased level of unique microbes. They accumulate on the surface and emit some pink pigment. Soon, these microbes settled to the bottom, and the lake became transparent again. Also, rains help the water go back to its usual appearance. These microbes color the lake and make the pink plumage of flamingos even brighter. The birds get food from the Lonar Lake and absorb these pink bacteria. Now, Lonar Lake is a popular place among tourists. But this is not the only thing that may surprise you in India. Our next stop is a small village with about 2,600 people located in a hot rainforest. The locals are very hospitable. They welcome not only tourists, but also one of the most venomous reptiles on the planet. King cobras are crawling in almost every house in this village. Locals are happy to see them as if they were their pets. People share water and food with these animals. They even give the reptiles a special corner where they can relax from the scorching sun. Ah, Cobras crawl in houses, schools, and even on the streets. Humans and reptiles are used to each other and feel safe. There has never been a case of a cobra attack in the village. It's the only place in the world where these venomous reptiles live in such harmony with people. Now, imagine a town that consists of many little united villages. The residents are all engaged in agriculture. They know how to extract water from ground rocks, and they bargain well. The town has been thriving for several centuries, and people live happily in it. Then, one day, everything changes. All the residents quickly pack up their stuff and run away from their homes. Overnight, the town becomes abandoned. It is a real story that happened in the state of Rajasthan in 1825. And still, no one knows why the people disappeared from there. The most popular version says that the cruel local ruler collected large taxes from the locals. Then he fell in love with the daughter of the chief of this town and threatened that he would collect extra taxes if the girl refused to be his wife. Citizens decided to support the woman and her father and left their homes in one day. This town is still empty, but the locals from the nearest cities are afraid to approach. Our next stop is the state of Maharashtra. There's a small village there with very positive people. They go to stores, cafes, schools, and banks. Everything here seems quite ordinary, and you wouldn't notice what's so special about this place. But just wait for the night to come. People go to sleep and no one locks their houses. There are no locks at all in this village. The door of any building is always open here. The owners leave the shops, cafes, and libraries open. When locals go to work, they don't lock up their homes either. They don't hide money and jewelry. The reason for this is the complete absence of thefts. The villagers are sure that anyone can get into serious trouble for stealing. According to a legend, about 300 years ago, after prolonged rains and floods, a large black stone slab appeared in the center of the village. This slab symbolized an Indian mythical creature that watched over the locals. At some point, people stopped locking their houses because they knew that no one would dare to commit theft in that creature's face. In 2015, a police station was opened here, but almost no one has reported an incident since then. The building doesn't even have doors because the police don't keep anyone there. Another fantastic place in India is a village in the state of Assam. Hundreds of locals prepare here for an unusual celebration every now and then. They arrange a magnificent wedding ceremony. They set the table, dress up in beautiful costumes, and bring gifts. And all this for the newlyweds. But instead of people, frogs get married here. Locals hold weddings for wild frogs to summon rain. The incredible thing is that the ceremony looks just like a real wedding. The fun can last all day until late at night. Now, there's one dangerous and inaccessible island in India. You can find it in the Bay of Bengal. It's called the North Sentinel. It's a small piece of land that looks like a tropical paradise. But you won't be able to get there. 
Since 1956, nobody can travel to this place. The Coast Guard is always sailing around and patrolling the area. The reason for this is the local Sentinelese tribe. This tribe lives isolated from the whole world. They don't know about modern technologies, the internet, or television. For centuries, the Sentinelese have lived on their own, away from civilization. And the people from India want to keep it that way. Anyone who approaches their island is welcomed by the tribe with a flurry of spears and arrows. And it doesn't matter if you're coming by boat or helicopter. Another reason why you can't get on the island is the Sentinelese immune system. The Coast Guard is trying to protect the local tribe from possible diseases and infections that outsiders can bring with them. The locals have no immunity from the flu or even a simple cold. They don't know what that is. Also, there are coral reefs and limestone around the island, which significantly complicates the passage of large ships. Despite all the prohibitions, many people tried to get to the island. In 1880, one officer accidentally discovered this island. He went ashore and found a noble soil ideal for growing coconut palms. The officer also noticed several huts on the island, but didn't dare meet the locals. Explorers and travelers presented the islanders with fish as a gift many times. The locals accepted it, asked for more, but still didn't let them approach their houses. It was also challenging to make friends with the tribe, because they communicate in one of the most difficult languages to learn in the world. Scientists and linguists have been studying this language for decades. At the end of the 20th century, outsiders made some progress in building a connection with the tribe. In 1991, a team of anthropologists invited the islanders aboard a large ship. They gave bags of coconuts to tribe members. This may be where the phrase, left holding the bag, came from. Or not. Otherwise, let's just leave these folks alone, shall we? In 1945, five TBF Avenger aircraft took flight for a routine training exercise around the Bermuda Triangle. In the middle of the exercise, the planes were struck by intense rain and heavy winds, despite the clear weather forecast. The pilots became extremely disoriented and radioed the base to report that their navigational equipment had stopped working. The last thing the base heard was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we'll all go down together, and then static. The five planes and their 14 crew members were never seen or heard from again. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. No one knows exactly how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. Another bizarre theory trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charlie Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the US on its way to the West Indies. 
the ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. An enormous investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. This particular area of the ocean is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On the ocean floor, decomposing organisms let off large concentrations of methane gas that gets trapped under the water. This gas can build up until, boom, it ruptures. The gas surges up to the surface and erupts. If a ship was in the area of one of these ruptures, the water would become much less dense and cause the ship to sink rapidly and without warning. Scientists believe this could be the cause of the many disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. While this theory makes a lot of sense, it doesn't seem too likely. The U.S. Geological Survey has stated that no large releases of gas are believed to have occurred in this area for the past 15,000 years. The ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to high concentrations of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Since the magnetic field is constantly moving, it might be also taking the Bermuda Triangle with it. Now that people know where the triangle is, it's easy to avoid it. It supposedly moves eastward together with the magnetic poles. But scientists still can't answer where exactly it will be in a couple of years. Some people blame all the disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. There's another triangle in Lake Michigan. Just like the one near Bermuda, the Michigan Triangle got its shady reputation for some disappearances. The first recorded one dates back to 1679. A large vessel, one of the largest of that time, set out on an expedition. Yet, once it got in the sinister triangle, it never came back. Much later, an aircraft disappeared in this triangle. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Meanwhile, the Pacific Ocean mystery area is another sinister triangle. Off the south coast of Japan, not far away from Tokyo, there's a sea where plenty of ships met their doom, disappearing without a trace in these waters. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Triangle area. You're deviating from your original course and sailing in the wrong direction. There's the Caribbean Sea near the triangle peppered with small islands. The seafloor here isn't deep. The ship can get in shallow waters. And now the ship is stuck on a shoal and you have no idea where you are. If this were the 21st century, the ship's captain would be able to reach the shore using GPS and other modern navigation. But the most interesting thing is that the compass would work correctly this time, since the magnetic north pole hasn't already coincided with the true one for a long time in the territory of the Bermuda Triangle. The agonic line is somewhere far away from here. There are no problems with navigation now. But for some reason, 
this is where ships disappear. In fact, not just here. Throughout the Atlantic Ocean, there are places where many more ships were gone. The Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of such places. One of the main reasons why many ships are lost here is that one of the most popular shipping routes in the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. And the more ships in one place, the more shipwrecks. Simple probability. Then, it just starts getting weird. Other theories say that there's a space-time rift in this region. Ships and planes fall into this rift and end up in the past or the future. But for some reason, there's not a single proof of this myth. There's no reason to think that the rift is hidden somewhere here. The base of an extraterrestrial civilization is located in the Bermuda Triangle. Visitors from other galaxies steal sea vessels along with the crew, so no one finds the wreckage of the ships. This is also a popular myth that has no scientific justification. The Kraken lives somewhere in the Triangle. It's a huge squid that sinks ships and also is a legend that sailors tell each other. However, gigantic squids live in the depths of the ocean. They can grow to the size of a half a train car, but no cases have ever been recorded where they sunk a large vessel. And in the area of the Bermuda Triangle, they have never ever been seen. People in the past didn't know about the existence of these creatures. So when they saw them for the first time, they described